Aloha, I'm Dr. Ruben Juarez. I'm a professor in economics and Yuhiro at Jewish Manoa. I'm also the director of Data Coordination and Evaluation at the Pacific Alliance Against COVID-19, or PAC. PAC is part of a national consortium funded by the National Institutes of Health, RADEXAP Initiative, to increase COVID-19 testing capacity and uptake in underserved communities. PAC has enabled us to put together a, a really innovative partnership between multiple entities, not just the university uh, implementing research, but the University of Hawaii partnering and really forming equal partnerships with multiple organizations across the state. This includes federally qualified health centers, including five health centers that make up the Aharo Network, the Waianae Coast Comprehensive Health Center, the Hamakua Kohala Health Center, Bay Clinic, Molokai Health Center, and the Waimanalo Health Center. In addition, we partnered with the Department of Education, charter schools, as well as the Department of Health, and community members in each of these communities across the islands. So the project collects a wide range of data from individuals and communities with the goal and intent that this can be used to make more informed, data-driven decisions to close this gap for testing and vaccination in Hawaii and throughout the Pacific. I oversee the testing unit of PAC, where my role is to help build capacity for community and school-based testing and assist with interventions to increase the uptake of health services to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. As a biomedical scientist, my research focuses on understanding the biological mechanisms that underlie the relationship between environment and health. This is usually in a health disparities context where we study how and why certain individuals in our community are at a higher risk than others of developing non-communicable disorders such as obesity and diabetes. And this often involves differences in immune health. It turns out that such individuals are also at risk for severe COVID-19 complications, suggesting shared biological pathways are related. One of my research goals is to better understand these biologic determinants of health uh, to prevent disease. In addition to this, we recognize early into the COVID-19 pandemic that communities we have worked closely with for years have already experienced health disparities and would be more vulnerable to severe COVID-19. Underserved communities in Hawaii, including those composed by Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, and Filipinos, are shown one of the largest disparities for COVID-19 in the nation. Our team created a new model of testing at schools that was piloted at Kamaile Academy. The platform has received great reviews from the participants, and we are hoping that this upcoming fall is going to be developed to other schools statewide. When initially approached uh, to partner and do COVID testing at Kamaile, my first reaction is, let's do it. We have the flexibility, we have the autonomy as a charter school, but the real decision was about what's right for our school community to keep our kids and staff safe. We are doing COVID tests for all the staff of the school here. COVID is still a problem, is still happening in our islands. And what we are trying to do is through providing free COVID testing, to the teachers and the staff of the school, they can make sure that they are not infected right now so the school can stay open. The type of test that we're doing here is a rapid antigen test. And the two types of tests that we're doing are the uh, Abbott Binex Now, that will give you results in 15 minutes, and also the BD Veritor. So it's a lateral flow immunoassay test that recognizes the antigens uh, of the COVID virus. I think the PAC program and the partnership that we have between Kamile and PAC is really strong. And I I, for one, personally want to continue to be able to be tested. I want to like know that I have that safety and I want to go into next year with more assurances that things will be normal than I went into this previous school year with and testing is one really good way to make sure that that happens. It's preventative measure. So we can come, we can gauge like, you know, like how are we doing in our own communities with our own families if we're keeping safe. And it's a good way to monitor. That's why I do it every week and this is my third time. We also do some studies in our laboratory in Jobson Medical School, where we have been studying how people that had COVID before, how they are developing immunity to the disease, and if they have a risk of getting it again or not. But we also have been studying different populations 
how they develop immunity after they have been vaccinating. So we have been doing multiple studies about COVID. In general, I've been very thankful for the strong relationship between public health officials and the schools. It's been really important that we have accurate data during a pandemic so we can make the decisions at our school level. This type of data um, around COVID testing for our staff is just one more example. This data helps us to make decisions so that we can keep our kids safe and focus on learning and our staff feels comfortable so we can focus on learning. Yes, I would highly recommend this testing for other schools like all over this, this the state and at least we'll be able to gauge how we're doing, you know, in our own families, in our own community. and. You know, what's, what's the numbers? Are we doing our part here in YNI? So I really highly recommend that schools participate in this. I think it creates a sense of safety and security amongst staff members and community members. For me personally, knowing every week that I can come to work and get a test on top of being vaccinated just makes me feel really comfortable being around my students and then also going home and not worrying about taking anything back to my family. I do recommend this program for other schools, uh, mostly because we've grown a really close relationship with Kamaili and I think that's the most important part is that if we have great relationships building with schools uh, that's building relationships with the community and when we can do that we can get trust out of the community to make sure that we can keep them safe. This is exactly what we're doing with this program and we want to make sure that we can offer this to other schools also. Just some final thoughts again I just want to mahalo our partners um, PAC, the Department of Health, Wainai Coast Comprehensive Health Center for their continued support. You know, um, this is our school, it's our responsibility, it's our community, and we do the work together. This pilot COVID testing project here at Kamaile is an example of that. We collaborated to find solutions to make things better, which is our aim through this, this pandemic. But I'm hoping that the rest of the larger school community around the state can learn from the work that we've done here um, to replicate this um, across Hawaii so that all of our kids can be safe and all of our staff can be safe. I do believe more schools should participate in this program because I think, unfortunately, a lot of people think that we are safe already. A lot of people think that, okay, we should go back to normal right now. And unfortunately, I don't think that's true. COVID is still around. We still have a good proportion of our population that haven't been vaccinated yet. And also one thing that a lot of people, unfortunately, don't think is that the vaccine is not an absolutely no, right? You still can get COVID. So if more schools could get involved in this project, I think it would be great. So I think it's our job as researchers on this project to teach people about the testing, about the vaccines, about how this can help you, but also help your family, your community, and our island. I'm proud to say that because of this Community Academic Health Center partnership, the testing unit of PAC has established the first ever molecular diagnostic facility within a federally qualified health center in the state. And we hope this could be a model to expand on where we rely less on outside resources and expertise, but build a sustainable capacity to address infectious disease locally. In parallel, we recognize that eliminating disparities must involve education. As such, we work with schools not only to test, but also to educate teachers and students. Our team developed a new COVID-19 curriculum that we hope teachers can deploy in the fall. We see teachers and schools as assets in preventing the spread of COVID-19 in Hawaii. It's always been our belief that the more you can empower students and teachers to have the knowledge to take control over some of the various streams of information that are coming in, that you will have a better uh, control over health, you'll have a better understanding of what is a reliable source of information. So you can go to the modules. We have two different forms of how you can learn about the modules and teach from the modules. One is by videos and each is about 15 minutes and the other one is through a PowerPoint presentation. There's four modules. One looks at the history of infectious disease in Hawaii and that one is really important because people often don't realize that the Hawaiian population was very, very low by the time that a lot of the people like my ancestors came in 
that 90% of the people had already perished. So it's a recognition that this is not the end of the different kinds of introduced diseases, it's just the most recent one. So that's module one. Module two, we begin to look at how if students understand some of the background for COVID-19 indicators, for example, comorbidities are the kind of pre-existing conditions like diabetes, for example, or heart trouble, that they can then actually do outreach with their families. The next one has to do with thinking about what do you need to know in terms of protection and prevention. COVID-19 and the SARS-CoV-2 virus are mutating. So there are different ways now that even with the vaccine, people still need to protect themselves and protect their loved ones. In module four, we're really excited to be able to bring you the most updated information about the vaccines and the reasons for testing, and also why it's really important to continue this testing because we now have variants. It is still really, really important to understand the role of testing, vaccines, and variants, and how they all work together. So we're really looking at students and educators in general, being able to be collaborators and partners with our public health. I think that this is going to be really important because we find that teachers are the connectors for many students to the world and also to whether they are considering health and science um, as fields to go into. We see PAC as continuing to not only address the problems of today, but build the infrastructure that we need for tomorrow to prevent the problems from happening again. And we mean by building capacity for educators to empower students through education, uh, information, and knowledge, as well as resources and technology that we're actually leveraging as part of PAC to embed in the community and to foster a better relationship, more deeper relationship between the academic researchers as well as partners in the state. And by doing that, we want to be able to create opportunities for our next generation of explorers and discoverers and ent entrepreneurs to address community problems from education, from resources that we embed in the community through technology, as well as the expertise that we developed locally. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a huge impact on communities across Hawaii, but we are certain that by bringing together partnerships, partners who never worked together, but are finding ways to work it out and figure out the best strategies to address the disparities, to get people tested, to keep people healthy and safe, that we're gonna be able to, to get through this together. And so what we're really hoping is that we're gonna address the pandemic and that we're gonna create a, an infrastructure, a sustainable partnership that will be there to address health disparities in the future.